Welcome everybody. This is General Microsoft 365 Development Special Interest Group. Uh, it is the bi-weekly sync happening always on bi-weekly on Thursdays. Uh, and today is August 20 at August 20, 2020. Wow. That's a, that sounds really awesome. Now, uh, today again, we'll have a relatively busy call. So we have a typical recap on, on what's happening in the open source projects. Uh, so uh, just a recap on what's happening in the PMP site score and PMP PowerShell, the most widely used open source projects, which are pretty much out there in, in our areas. More than 50,000 tenants every single month are using this. Then pronunciation tooling, and uh, then talk about your teams. And then we have three demos. Uh, so Chris Kent is doing some list magic. Um, it's actually, we are created with Chris and that he doesn't even share with us what he's going to do. Uh, so we do not know what's going to happen. And then uh, after that, Medhan is going to do a demo on Microsoft Teams and app templates. So this time we're going to talk, have a talk about growing your skills and hopefully we'll, we'll address those uh, technical issues which I had last time. So we, we did some testing already before we started this call. And then Jim Duncan on the last uh, creating Teams meeting recordings for external, uh, external guests. Uh, so basically, how can you share automatically your Microsoft Teams meeting recordings with external guests because that by default is not available. And, and he has some really clever automation things together with Francesco on showing how to do this uh, in an efficient automated way using, by the way, Power Automate. So I'm spilling some of the beans there. Now, almost automatically, yes, fair point. Thank you, Jim, on that one. Now, uh, we'll see what it is all about when we get there. Now, a quick recap on how to participate in the community. Um, so you can volunteer to do a demo on technical a demo, a solution or a technical pattern. This could be an open source solution. This could be your solution. It doesn't have to be an open source solution, but not about selling uh, your products or showing a technical pattern. A lot of us actually think and, and need to tackle, let's say, customer processes or implementation and sharing those learnings is super, super important between the others. So we can learn from each other in these calls. Uh, you can absolutely also contribute in GitHub if you are have the skills on it. If you don't have skills on it, um, please join our sharing is caring sessions. We're going to talk about that one in a second. So you'll learn how to contribute in GitHub. So it's a super valuable thing as well. And then uh, the most important piece uh, of everything is always provide feedback, provide feedback, provide feedback. We are here for helping your life to be easier. That is the primary purpose uh, of the people in this call. Now, a uh, quick recap on the on the typical assets. So we have a few different YouTube channels. So we have the Microsoft 365 developer videos, the official YouTube channel, and then we have the community uh, videos channels. Slightly confusing that we have two of these. It, there's a historical reasons for it. And then since both of them have quite a significant amount of subscribers, we don't want to shut them down or the other one down. And also the Microsoft 365 SharePoint community videos and the BMP video channel has also non-developer topics as well. So you can actually stay up to date on, on uh, other areas as well. We have a lot of open source assets available and under SharePoint, BMP, and Office Dev, and Microsoft Craft Assets, uh, and, and uh, GitHub organizations. So take advantage of those. And please do not start from scratch when you're implementing something. Go and have a look at what's available. As an example, uh, Madhan is going to demonstrate today one of the Microsoft Teams app templates, which are actually reference solutions for you to take advantage for free and even repackage and rebuild your own uh, offerings on top of them. So really cool stuff available uh, in there. If you're looking into how to find what's relevant for you, so what is the sample what you're trying to find for React or based on Teams or a bot, please take advantage of our sample gallery. So right now we have SPFX web parts, SPFX extensions, list formatting, and team samples galleries available. Now, in the longer run, we're looking into having a consolidated uh, super uber uh, sample gallery where you can actually find all of the different different samples related on Microsoft 365 development. So you can easily find what's available. And um, there's a lot of URLs, there's a lot of things available. And if you're kind of confused on what are all of these things, go to the AKMS M365 BMP. From there, you can get access on the community call invites, all of the community calls, the documentation, samples, projects, open source stuff, and all of that. So you'll understand what are we actually doing and why we aren't doing this stuff. Um, everything is for you to take advantage. So our primary purpose is to ensure that we'll make your life easier. And if for whatever reasons we are not, please let us know. Again, feedback super important. Now, a few recaps um, on the on the latest news. I only have one news announcement to make today. Uh, so we pushed out an announcement related on taxonomy APIs available in the Microsoft Craft beta endpoint today. Uh, so if you go to the Microsoft Craft documentation, 
And at the beta endpoint underneath the sites and lists, you can actually find the taxonomy in preview uh, uh, API documentation, which is really, really cool. Uh, so these are now available in Microsoft Graph. Um, we, they are not yet in 1.0, endpoints, but we are not really expecting to have a significant changes in these APIs anymore. We might add additional properties uh, or something like that, but the basic structure is intended to be as it is already. Uh, so later this year, it will move from the beta to 1.0 endpoint. So really, really cool one and awesome. Uh, we announced this, by the way, Jim, you're, I missed it. No, we announced it actually 20 minutes ago or 30 minutes ago in social media. And I closed the user voice entry. If you had voted on that one, you got an email related on that. The other thing what I wanted to remind is quickly on the uh, sharing is caring initiative. So if you don't feel familiar by contributing or getting started on contributing in open source or documentation or community work, get involved in these sharing is caring sessions. These are really for you as an instructional uh, led teachings and sessions where you will learn how to contribute to docs or how to contribute to documentation, uh, the samples and, and all of that. So there's multiple different sessions available. If you go to the AKMS Sharing is Caring, you can register to those sessions and you'll get an invite and the connection details. Really, really great stuff uh, led by David, David Bonner and Hugo Bernier, making sure that everybody gets to the same level of knowledge to get to be able to contribute as well. So really, really cool stuff. Now let's go to the BMP site, see some core library. Bert, uh, you'll do a quick update on what's happening in here. Yes, uh, first of all, I think the usage is, is really uh, exploding. Skyrocketing. You see an explosion on the screen there, the, the, the red thingy, but no, really, it's uh, it went from a, in a 40,000 range to 65,000 in, uh, in the July time frame. Two and months, most that's actually August impressive. will, will uh, again grow. So it's a huge, huge amount of tenants using PNP site score, which is really cool. And thanks for that, guys. Uh, now, moving forward with uh, what are we working on? Um, I think the, the main thing is the .NET standard preview release that we uh, are working on uh, to get that shipped. So you can actually use the PNP site score library uh, in, uh, in uh, .NET standard. Uh, so outside of uh, classic uh, Windows environments, I would say. And on Azure, uh, one other new thing is uh, support for uh, JSON localization files. So uh, for the folks that use localization, you do have played around with those ResX files, those XML files, which have been existing for like 20 years, I guess. But we now also support uh, just property value JSON files, but like uh, SPFX does, which might be easier for some guys uh, to, to use. And then uh, looking forward, uh, we're still actively working on the PNP Core SDK. There was a little bit of a slowdown during vacation time, but now we're ramping up again. Uh, I know that Yannick is doing a lot of work there, uh, same with Yawas. Um, but uh, that's going on, and, and um, I think there's a call out for that one. If you're interested in modern .NET development and want to help out there, uh, please let us know. Uh, go to the issue list or just reach out. Uh, happy to get you started uh, and teach you uh, how that works. Excellent. Right. And then let's jump on the PMP PowerShell side of the house. I think Irvin is on the on the call as well to do, yep. provide a quick yeah. update. Yep. Yep. So uh, we've been cleaning up a lot the last couple of months, last few months, a lot of cleaning, a lot of reorganizing internally. That has been ongoing. Uh, also prepping for the net standard build, which will come hopefully very soon. Um, we did uh, quite some authentication improvements behind the scenes and uh, hopefully we'll provide you now with somewhat more clearer error messages uh, telling you if something doesn't work, why it doesn't work or what do we need from you. For instance, you'll get a message stating that we need a different way of connecting if you execute a command that uses the graph. Um, a lot of uh, other small internal fixes when it comes to auth and acquiring tokens and all kinds of things there. So a lot of auth work actually. Um, so we had a freeze of uh, PRs uh, that has been lifted. So we start to, we're starting to merge PRs now again. So if you have outstanding PRs, you will see that we'll uh, one by one, we'll go through them and uh, they'll end up in the, uh, in the branch. Cool. 
Now, now, just to be clear on the .NET standard build, because Nigel is asking that as well. So that means basically PowerShell core. So the newer version of PowerShell uh, is, is, is coming in the pipeline. We're, we're having small resourcing issues here uh, on, the, on the coordination side of the house, but things are evolving. So please be patient. It's coming, coming as fast as possible. So you can actually then use BMP PowerShell also in Azure functions uh, as an example to automate stuff over there. I think that's the primary use case. Uh, if you, if you attend, if you attend the uh, PNP conference on the first of September, you will. Why say didn't the, I have a slide on that? I don't know. I, I don't. I don't. Just, I don't. Wow. But anyway. if you go there, if you attend there, it's free. Keep in mind, uh, you uh, you will see me actually do a um, PowerShell function, Azure function V3 using PNP PowerShell. So it's getting there. We're super close, um, but at the same time, we don't want to release it too early because then it increases the support uh, effort and support questions, and that's not a good thing either. Cool. Thanks, thanks, Erwin, on that one. And usage is growing on on uh, quite nicely as well. It, it's wonderful to see uh, that people are using more and more of these tools and components. Uh, now let's go to the modernization tooling. Back to you, Bert. Yes. Um... Upcoming September release will have a couple of changes, mainly around Shopping 2010 uh, transformation. So there's some improvements done by community by uh, Alberto Gutierrez. So thanks for that, Alberto. Um, then, uh, but actually, the main change uh, nowadays was done for for the scanner. So the modernization scanner was the, is the tool which is positioned for workflow deprecation. You probably all have heard about that. So if not, then uh, we've deprecated Shopping 2010 workflow, and and uh, the scanner is the recommended way for you to understand where are SharePoint 2010 workflows used in your tenant. And with the 2.16 release, which I pushed out yesterday, there is some improvements. Um, uh, it now correctly skips skips older workflow versions. Uh, and it has improved the analysis of the actual workflow file. The previous version was missing some workflow actions, which is now corrected in this build. Um, so um, if you're into that, just pull down the latest version and, and start using it. That's cool. it. Excellent. Thank you, Bert, on that one. And then a quick recap on the Yo Teams, which is also an open source uh, awesome open source project uh, executed under the, the BMP umbrella. Uh, Victor is not in call. So there's a new uh, preview version available, which is uh, 2.16 preview. And this will have then support for the uh, schema 1.7 and SDK 1.7 support. SDK is 1.7 came, I think, in mid-July. Um, but Victor was also in the, in the summer vacation, having some time off with the family. Uh, so the, the coordinations got slightly delayed. Now, June 2020 uh, and uh, was the best month so far. Over 4,500 generated projects uh, within the past 90 days. So people are using more and more uh, your team as well, uh, which is one of the options uh, on the generators uh, to use when you're targeting uh, Microsoft Teams. Again, depending on your preference, do you want to use the, the Visual Studio Code generator or do you want to use .NET? Um, and this one is then for the Node uh, implementation. So matter of a preference, which one do you want to use? Uh, on the horizon, uh, the 2.16 uh, is coming relatively soon. Version 3. Point is coming uh, uh, relatively soon as well in the in the August-September timeframe with quite a significant change. Uh, we have started uh, uh, discussions together with Microsoft Teams, uh, Visual Studio Code uh, uh, engineering. So we're looking into integration models uh, with them. So potentially at some point you can actually choose when you're using the Visual Studio Code the add-on that are you going to target the EO teams or are you going to target the JavaScript based implementation because your teams is for TypeScript and then the, the native one which is there in the Visual Studio Code extension is JavaScript based. Uh, there's a lot of help uh, or there's a lot of opportunities of contributing here and getting involved and Victor Villan would love you to get uh, looped in uh, if you have uh, interest on helping uh, on this project. But that's it uh, for the quick updates on the project side and we're hitting quarter past. So my, that's cool. We are actually on the schedule. This is wild. Uh, we are on the schedule, even though I'm presenting. That's that's super rare. Uh, so Chris, I think you are on a call here. Mm -hmm. So uh, you are back with your recurrent spot related on list magic. What are we going to see today? Well, hey everybody. All right, I'm Chris. Let's do it. So we're on the classic warrior horses site, right? And we want to. You know, do what we always do, which is create some nice lists to track some things. You know, in this case, we want to, you know, we're interviewing new horses that maybe want a part of our team, uh, part of our army. Probably we're recruiting them. 
Uh, so we want to create a list. Now I have a couple of options, right? If I'm here on the home page and I go up here and I go new, I can go new list. And I get this kind of classic thing here. I just type a name and description and show the site description, site navigation or not. That's not what I want to do. We have another option, right? Uh, which is go to site contents. And I can hit new here and I can see new list and I get even fancier, right? So now I start to see I can do it from an existing list. Uh, we can all over the site, so I can do it from Excel, which is really fancy. Uh, there's some new exciting stuff that's coming here, but I don't have it yet in my tenant. Or, even better, I can go somewhere else, which in this case, I'm going to go to office.com. right? And here I can see my list of apps. If I come down here to all apps, I can see this new guy called List. right? So this is just rolled out here at the end of July. Um, I'm in targeted release, so it's possible you don't quite have it yet, but I believe it's, it's fully out there. Um, not sure on standard release yet. Uh, but the idea is I can click this. I could, of course, always get it in the waffle as well, list. And if I don't see it there, I'll go to all apps, and there it is. But in this case, we're going to go check out Microsoft Lists. Ooh, pretty. All right, so it's automatically got a ton of lists that I've created um, or that I've recently accessed. So what shows up in this list is all the, all the lists I've accessed recently, any lists that I've created that I own. Now, I should note that that's created from within lists um, or lists that are shared with me. All right, so I can come here and I can see my recent list. I can see just the ones I've created, which I haven't created any in here, apparently. All right, and we've got some minor filtering here. All right, and of course, I can favor it and everything else. So this is cool. So I can see all the lists I've already have. All right, so my Warrior Horses site, I've got an agents list here. So if I open that up, you can see this is a list we've seen before. If I zoom in just a little bit so we can see that a little better. All right, we can see all my formatting, everything's there. Uh, what I don't have is my site navigation. Uh, this is completely disconnected from the site in that sense, but it is still loading from the site. Um, and you could tell that, but if I just remove this query string that says uh, environment or env equals web view lists, and I just remove that, press enter, um, I'm back on the site. You'll notice I still have this purple, so I'll have to refresh for just a second. There we go. All right, so now I'm back on my uh, Warrior Horses site. I collapse that, and you can see that. So there's nothing different there, but it's a different way to get at it. So let's go back. And yeah, let's actually load that up again. Because uh, one of the things I want to point out with that is, you know, this is a nice, cool way to see this, but you'll see an interesting thing is that I've got a purple highlight here. That's coming from a view format um, that I've applied that just puts a hover style on there that uses the theme. But because I'm in the lit Microsoft list, it's purple. Uh, but again, if I go back to my regular view of that, it's now yellow, which matches my, my site theme. So we've talked about it before, but making sure that your formats uh, use the theme colors uh, rather than hard-coded colors uh, really comes in handy and things like this. Okay, so now let's talk about what are we actually looking at with this list, All right? So what can we do with this? Why, why do I need to access it this way? Well, one nice thing is it pulls it all centrally in, uh, but I can create new lists here that are kind of, they seem standalone. They're not actually standalone, but if I hit this new list, now I have some other options, right? We've got our familiar from Excel we saw before. Back on that, we have the from existing list. Again, these are the exact same options you have when you go for the site contents route. But now I've got this idea of some templates here. So I could pick between all these templates. Now I said we're trying to hire new horses here, so I'm going to pick the recruitment tracker. Now, one cool thing is I can actually see a preview of this. I can see what, what it's going to look like. I can see there's quite a few formats applied, right? They've got some formats on the people fields, got these nice pill formats, and so on. Um, and fun fact, that's actually a list that's being rendered with real formatting in the background. It's not a, uh, it's not just hard-coded. So we're going to use template, and I'm going to name it, right? We're going to call this, you know, um, Warrior Candidates. So that sounds great. All right, I can add a description just like it could before. And here I get to choose a picture, you know, color. I'm going to choose red, of course. Now I'm limited in this particular subset of icons, at least for now. I'm not sure if that's if there's any plans to change that. Uh, considering there's almost 2,000 plus icons, and uh, we get these. But I'm going to pick a robot because that sounds exciting. Now here's what's important. I can choose uh, all these different sites that I have access to create lists in, or my recent sites that I have those access level. And again, it'll just create a list just like normal within that site. Um, or I'm creating what's called my list. All this is really doing, if you look at this address up here, this is my OneDrive. So your OneDrive is a full-on SharePoint site. And so it's just going to create a list inside OneDrive. Now, this is a great way to, by doing that by default, it's only going to be shared with you. So you can get your list set up, 
you know, add your items, and then later you can share it out with everybody else. Um, and that's great if you're really just focused on a list to track stuff uh, between multiple people. You want to use the format and everything else. Uh, but generally, if you're working within the context of a site or a team, uh, you're going to want to create it inside that. So I'm just going to create. And the cool thing about these formats uh, is that it comes with not only all my, my column types are already set up, it comes with all the formatting already set up. So I can hit New. And you see, I've got all this here I can add stuff to. So for this candidate, we're going to call him, uh, I don't know, the Horsey St. Junior. I have no idea what that means. Horsey St. Junior. That sounds great. All right, I could pick he's going to be a designer. You know, designer? What? That, that doesn't make any sense for me, right? I don't want a designer. In this case, we'll, we'll keep designer for a second. I'm going to save that just so we can kind of see some of the stuff come up here. But I can come in just because this is a list that's already been created. I can say edit. And I can create, you know, new choices and new formats with those, which is really cool, right? So I can add a choice here, and we'll call this choice, um, you know, warrior. And we'll call it, uh, yeah, warrior sounds good. All right, and we're going to change what that looks like. We're going to say that's going to be red, right? And very exciting, we're going to save that. So now we have a new option when we're creating these. So if I edit this, I should be able to switch him to a warrior. So one of the cool things is you'll see I didn't have to do anything with that format. It just kind of already existed, and I had a little wizard to kind of help me with that. Um, and if we edit that one more time, so I can add some people in here. Uh, let's say the interviewers are going to be myself. All right, we'll say me. And we'll add uh, Dan. That sounds great. And we'll add uh, Nate. And we'll add uh, Vigo Porsenberg. Sounds exciting. All right. Yeah. So I'm going to save that, and you can see here, I have this kind of already built, and um, my interviews didn't show up, which is interesting. <laughs> Let me refresh that and see if they're there. All right, well, good. Well, this just rolled out, so I'm not sure uh, what's going on there. Is that at that seat, did it really save them? Did it really not? That's sad. Point out in the comments, uh, the chat, if you know what I did wrong there. We'll, we'll just put the two in for now, and we're going to save that. We'll see if we get those. There you go. We got them. Now, I will say two weeks ago, this was actually our face pile sample. Um, I understand they've now switched it to more of that pill type style with a, with a person thing. But because this is just a list, I can come in here and I can call them says, I can format this column. Right? So you can see it's just got my standard formatting in here. And I can even head over to our classic samples. I and go to column samples. And if I want to go down to multi-person face pile, because I love the face pile, I can grab that. Copy that, and I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to just paste that in. All right, you'll see now it's our face file. So the idea here is these are just templates to create a new list. All right, we can use them in all sorts of really cool ways. Uh, but all the stuff we've talked about, all the power of lists um, in terms of you know view formatting, column formatting, um, you know, and everything else you'd expect in terms of like Power Apps customization or some of the new form customization that's coming very very soon. Uh, all of that's going to be available to you. And in fact, there's some other cool features as well. Now, besides the fact that I got this pretty fancy little icon here. So we go back here, and that's a wonderful list. So we'll go back into here to our, our lists, which I closed. There we go. We'll go back into the list. See, I'm a warrior candidates. I can favorite that so it shows up at the top. Um, I can also customize this. All right, I can change that icon or the color if I want to at any time. Um, and I can even share from here. All right, so this is the same share button you would get if you were sharing that directly from the list itself. But the idea here is it's very centralized, very easy to use. Uh, so pretty cool stuff. Um, pretty awesome. In fact, if you don't have this yet, I'll show you some resources where you can uh, take a look at that. In fact, if we go over to what's aka.ms uh, slash ms list. If we go there, it just takes you to this exciting site, which has kind of the latest details and everything going on. There's some really great videos here. All right, so Michaela's got a really nice one. Uh, it's about 17 minutes long that really goes through a lot of the features um, of lists and everything else. Check that out. But if you don't yet have this and you really want to kind of experience it, these demos are kind of neat. So you can hit this view demo. It'll actually take you through this kind of uh, process here. I'm just going to begin without guidance. You can have you know audio guidance. But the idea is here, although I don't have it yet in my tenant, all right, I can go ahead and kind of see what it would look like, experience, kind of click through what would be available. 
and see those features. So if you really want to see what's going on, you want to play with this a little more than the uh, five minutes on this call, this is a great way to do that. Okay. Now let's go back here and get out of that. Uh, and let's take a look at some of the other features that I am not yet able to show you because I don't have them in my tenant. We're just going to take a couple of looks at some screenshots of them. Uh, so one of those is the idea of comments. So list items will now be able to have comments. So you're going to have running commentary. Uh, this will be especially helpful in Teams, uh, right? So this is per list item, not the list itself, right? So you can actually see kind of right here, this one has comments. So if you've in the past used the multi-text field where you've append changes, right? We know there's lots of different issues with that. The biggest issue is that you can't access all that stuff in formatting, right? And that's very sad. But the idea of having comments here really makes these much more powerful. And of course, you can see this idea of creating rules. Uh, so all these are really doing is kind of pre-created pre um, templates for flows. But the idea is if I want to notify someone when a new item is created, I can choose that and I can actually choose from the list fields itself. So I could say, you know, notify all the interviewers that a new candidate's here to schedule an interview. Um, or I can always notify the same person, that kind of thing, and then I can manage all my different rules. Very powerful. Again, all the power of uh, Power Automate and Flow are still available to you. Then this one is awesome. So the idea is formatting the view. All right, we've seen this before, and you can already do this. We have several samples on the tile uh, props. So if you do the tile props inside uh, a column, you know, a view format, you can specify these kind of gallery or tile view. But there's a new tile designer coming. And when you edit that tile, you can use this kind of wizard and choose exactly what fields you want, right? If an image shows up, you can reorder them by dragging and dropping, you know, show the column names or not. And that's awesome, right? And this is really just generating that JSON for you. And so if you want to then switch to advanced mode after you've done the tile designer, you know, tweak something here, add a little button, something that's not supported, you can do that. Really, really cool. And then this is awesome. So we showed, I don't know, maybe three or four weeks ago now, uh, we showed you how you could add some formats to your events list, right? Even though that's a classic list. Uh, one of the things you couldn't do was affect the calendar, right? That will no longer be true. Now you'll have a new create new view option rather than just save view as. And when you create the new view, you can choose calendar if you've got one or more dates in the, in the list. Um, you can go ahead and set this up and plot everything on a calendar. And when you click those, it's going to have your same form. It's going to have all the same kind of experience and format and everything else available. Pretty cool. And then this is also important. So you can easily edit some of the forms. So there's a lot more stuff coming for that. One of the really nice things is just being able to apply some conditional formatting, right? So if I've got a field, in this case, we're showing, showing that we only want to show a field when, and this is a pretty ugly little thing here, but when this very specific user um, is looking at the form, right? So if we wanted to say instead, we want to you know, limit that to certain people, or we want to say only show notes when the status is complete, Right, something along those lines. It's very easy to do, and you no longer have to jump just into Power Apps just to do something simple like that. You'll notice here that this is the same Excel style expression that we use in formatting. In fact, it uses the same engine for that. So you can see it's using that same, you know, we've got a square bracket and a dollar sign, the column name, dot email, right? It's, it's the exact same stuff. So if you've been following attention, paying attention and following along with all of our list formatting examples and everything, you can use those same expressions here to do some pretty cool stuff. Uh, with the form itself. And in fact, you can customize the form. So you'll see this is an actual list form, uh, not using Power Apps. It's got a custom header. You can have a custom footer. Um, and you can do things with columns, right? It's got three columns. And you'll notice the actual formats are coming through, right? We've got that pill format showing up on the actual display version of the form. So really, really cool. Uh, we'll lose some of that disconnected experience we've had in the past where we've got awesome formats over on the left. And when you go to edit it, it's, you know, blah, list of columns, right? So, and then finally, some of this is coming to Teams with a dedicated list app. Uh, we've got a few different templates. Um, so, woo woo. And even cooler is a dedicated app for lists uh, that's coming for iOS and Android uh, later this year, uh, where you can see you can manage all the same things. You can actually create lists directly from the app. Um, you can add items. You can see all your formatting directly inside here. So, really, really cool. All right, so check this stuff out. If you don't have a chance to look at it yet, go to that MS list link we talked about. Try out that demo. Watch some of those videos. There's even a scary one um, where there's, like, stuffed animals that talk and then join a Microsoft Teams meeting. I'm not going to explain what that was about, but it's only a minute long. Go check that out. Um, 
so check all that out. If you're interested in more of the formatting stuff we type showed, this is the full documentation. All right, that's what I got. Woo! Excellent, excellent. Thank you, Chris. Uh, great presentation. Great summary on the on the lists and what they are and how they're being implemented and and how they relate on the SharePoint and OneDrive sites as well. So really, really cool stuff. Now let's actually move the mud hand um, around the Croyo skills Microsoft Teams app template. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Madan. I'm, I'm a product manager with Microsoft Teams. I'm with Microsoft for a little over than five years. So today I'm super excited to talk about one of the app templates called Grow Your Skills. And, uh, and of course, we have some interesting uh, cool demos and res resources to get started. All right, like what are we waiting for? Let's get started. So, all right, before we deep dive into uh, what Grow Your Skills app template is, let's quickly talk about what app templates are. So app templates are production ready apps for Microsoft Teams that are community driven, open source and available on GitHub. So each each of the app template contain, contains detailed instructions for deploying and installing that app for your organization and providing a ready to use app that you can install and begin uh, using immediately. And the most important part is the, com the source code is available as well and you can explore in detail and fork the code or clone the code and alter it to meet your specific needs or your or customers needs. That's a great part. I think Vesa brought in a great point in the beginning of the call, sir, that you know uh, this can be used as a reference solution as well. I mean, totally agree with that, actually. All right, some of the benefits of app templates. Uh, if you see here, the app templates, especially, you know, as I mentioned, you know, there is no coding required. If it uh, already meets your requirement, you can just go and click uh, deploy, and we have a great documentation available for you to kind of, you know, quickly deploy with a matter of 30 minutes or one hour. And the second one is uh, if you are an if you are a system integrator or an independent software vendor, you can definitely you know pick the you know customize it branded to your organization and then sell it as an IP to the customers. And number three is you know the privacy and the data residency part. It's a very interesting piece because most of the customers are worried about where the data resides, right? Since this app template is being uh, I mean uh, deployed to the Azure instance, it doesn't move out of the uh, premises. So which is which means an IT admin have complete control over the app template and they can you know uh, look at the audit logs and insights and uh, they can uh, definitely uh, th th this is very promising actually and the fourth one of course is you know uh, if you see the sample code that we have is something you can use as a reference and if you want to learn how to build apps for teams and definitely you can just you know fork it and then uh, you can uh, get your hands dirty with the, with the app templates so that's the main benefit key benefits of app template so what I would strongly recommend you to do is if you are new to app templates, my colleague Kiran has covered, you know, uh, covered this in a detailed manner. I think it's available uh, as, a, as a YouTube video in, uh, in the Microsoft Dev channel. I would strongly recommend you to kind of take a look at it. I'll share the links uh, later in the meeting chat. Uh, let's quickly go to uh, the app template here. So grow your skills. One of the key aspects, uh, I mean, for a HR team, right? So uh, how do I provide equal opportunity for all the employees to hack and learn new things based on their interest? And also, how do I upskill my employees and get them ramped up to speed on new technologies? And also, of course, you know, how do I know the current bench strength of my team and organization? These are the common questions that come to the HR team. And, uh, and that took remote work being a new normal these days. Gig economy will continue to grow and it is at its break, breakout point. It's not about just gig economy outside an organization. It also happening inside an organization so that cross teams are contributing to gig projects to balance the workload and of course, you know, uh, uh, get up to speed on new technologies. So that's the main value prop of this app template. And there are two key benefits. You know, of course, from an organization perspective for employers, it exposes employees to opportunities that they will enjoy and which in turn leads to accelerating employees career development and also in increases the chances you know, for, for the team members to contribute uh, on projects that have high visibility and impact, right? So those are the key, uh, I mean, benefits for, for an employer. And from an individual perspective, I mean, all individuals and go, go to, I mean, uh, finish certifications, but at the end of the day, I need to kind of get an opportunity to kind of get my hands dirty. And this is a great forum for employees to kind of, you know, create impact and also that allows strong alignment between work and interest. And most importantly, it promotes expanded networking. And of course, you know, it allows actions aligned with the career development aspirations. All right, this is the uh, value prop of this app template. So now let's quickly jump into the demo. I think uh, uh, that's what we are all waiting for. Just give me one second. 
So let's look scenario by scenario here. So uh, if you see here, this is an app, you know, we have like pinned it to the left trail. Of course, the users can pin it or I mean uh, the admin can, you know, do a pre pinning in bulk from the team's admin center. So if you see here, this is the uh, this is the app and it has like three tabs here. All projects, your projects and skills are acquired. Uh, and let's talk about the scenarios one by one. The first scenario here is as an employee, I need to discover and join uh, gig projects or opportunities based on my interest. Uh, so that I can learn and acquire new skills. So how do I discover opportunity? This is an opportunity shared by other peers or other stakeholders in an organization. So all I have to do is I have to discover so I can just go filter. And if I'm interested in, let's say, for example, design is my key area. I want to kind of uh, switch my career to this domain. Then I just search for it and then I'll be able to uh, see the projects related to little design. So if you see these are all by tags, so I'll just take a look at these and then what I'll do is I'll just go, go click on this. If this is exciting, I'll just click on join this project and read about it. OK, hey, this looks interesting. The total team size and this is a total time I need to invest. And if there are supporting documents and you know, I'll read about it and then click on join, right? So this way, you know, uh, I mean, employees can contribute to their uh, stretch projects. And of course, super important is like, you know, they'll be able to, uh, I mean, filter and then uh, they'll be able to search uh, projects very easily. That's uh, an important one. Uh, all right, now let's talk about the next feature of this uh, next scenario about creating projects, right? So, so far we are talking about consuming projects. So how do we create a project? Creating projects to request help with uh, specific skills and also it gives an opportunity for your coworkers to grow. So what I'll do is I'll just hit on the new project and uh, I will just type a name here. Let's say need help uh, with baseline analysis. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to copy paste for for the interest of time. So I will just basically type the description of the project here. So and I'll enter the start date here and end date and the team size. And let's say, for example, in this case, I need data analytics. Uh, probably here I will have uh, Power BI and uh, I'll just hit submit. Oops, so let me do one thing here. Yeah. That's it. The project is created. Now uh, every single employee will be able to kind of search this project and uh, and able to find find it in the discover in the all projects tab, right? So that's another piece. The third one, the third important, uh, I mean, scenario here is uh, employees can view all the skills acquired, you know, across multiple projects at one place. So once the project is started, like the, I mean, uh, the project creator can definitely close this project, and as a result, you know, uh, the tags you see here, right? Those are the tags that. Uh, a project creator can endorse and if you see here you will be able to find all the skills acquired at one place so let me just quickly go to another uh, screen for better visibility yeah i can see all the skills acquired at one place and so this gives a great opportunity for 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 an employee to show show it to your manager saying that hey this is what these are the skills i learned in the in this quarter or in this fiscal year so these are stretch projects and of course you know this gives a great opportunity for employees to kind of focus on uh, i mean based on their interest right Let's look at the uh, one of the interesting scenario here. So uh, it's not about just creating or identifying project. It's more about also acquiring skills, right? So let's say if as a project owner, I mean, uh, I uh, project is completed. So what I will do is I can just hope click on mark project as completed. And uh, here the important the fun part here is, you know, uh, I can just endorse people endorse my uh, peers, right? For example, in this case, you know, the employee has contributed on apps. I'll just say uh, type the tag and hit enter and then if it is teams, I'll just type it and hit enter and it's node.js and type it hit enter. So uh, I'll just say thanks for all your help. This is more to kind of boost or motivate employees to kind of contribute and stretch projects. So once I hit close, uh, what happens is let's quickly see here. If you see here, you know, I got a notification saying that, hey, it looks like, you know, the project is closed and uh, uh, I mean, the project creator has endorsed you for so and so skill and that goes into my skills database. So uh, if you see here, this got updated just now and this is very interesting for employees to kind of, you know, stay on top of their toes and learn new stuff. All right, um, let's go on to the other other scenarios here. So far we are talking from a personal scope. So what are the collaboration angle, right? The collaboration angle here is very important. Let's say, for example, in this case, I have a team, I have a channel. I want to kind of, you know, uh, keep a track of all the, I mean, C sharp projects, right? So what I'll do is I'll just go add a tab in a channel and search for the skill. So in this case, I will say C sharp and um, just give me one second here. Yep, here we go. So then I'll click on save. So 
so that all projects that are related to this C sharp skill will be loaded here, and uh, so that you know I'll be able to stay on top of new opportunities, and I'll just uh, I mean hit on this uh, chat icon, and I can start collaborating with my teammates, right? So that's another uh, interesting angle. Now let's look into the final scenario. Uh, now let's say, for example, I have created a project. I need more people to contribute, or probably I need to I need someone to join with me and contribute, right? In that case, I don't have to switch between multiple places. Or rather, what I will do is I'll just go to the uh, channel, and uh, I will just uh, click on this icon, uh, click on the message extension, and I can search by the project. I'll say, hey, uh, anyone interested? So people can start con conversation around this and uh, and also collaboration around this that's a great way for motivating other peers in my organization and uh, that way you know everyone can contribute and learn and grow together so th this is a, i mean this is pretty much it about the sap templates so let's quickly jump on to the next important thing i think this is where everyone would get super excited as I, as Vesa and I were talking about, right, you know, uh, extending this app template, any app templates. So if you are a system integrator, then definitely you can add these extensible points. You can cover these scenarios in a V2 and and add it to your IP and sell it to the customers. Or if you are an independent software vendor, you know, you can build a product out of this app template. That's a great advantage. I'm just gonna, not going to cover all these things in detail, but rather I'm going to pick some of uh, the scenarios that would be added on top of this app template. One is if you see here. Uh, HR HR team will have already have targeted learning, and if there is a way to kind of you know uh, uh, pull these skills acquired into the learning content, then it will be e very helpful for the HR team to kind of plan and target the learning, right? And also plan for the readiness or I mean uh, training of employees, and also at the same time they'll be able to plan resourcing, budgeting, and also will be able to assess the bench strength of the organization. So this is something super useful because each each customer will have their own HR systems, and that way it's uh, super easy to kind of you know uh, integrate with that actually and the second one i'm super excited about here is uh, being able to send batches so during the endorsement step if you remember uh, i sh i showed you where you can add a skill for an employee at the same time if there if you, you could also integrate this with the open badges app template where you can send badges once and once the project gets closed that's very interesting and uh, uh, i mean not just if the employee leaves out of the organization that badges still remains because uh, that that badges is badges is public facing and uh, that is something it's super exciting and the final one i really like about is kind of like gamify it further where you can add leaderboard to track you know how many members uh, in a team are participating uh, so that you know that way it builds competitive spirit among other employees and then uh, and then you know uh, everyone will start participating on this so this, these are some of the potential extensible scenarios. You can probably, if you feel that the customers are excited and they are have so, I mean, interest on similar lines, you can definitely uh, customize it and sell it to your customers. So uh, and and yeah, that's about the extension. Okay, so I think I pretty much covered. So let's uh, see how do we get started. So what are the resources available, right? So uh, let me just quickly jump onto here. So. This is the landing page where you know you'll find all the app templates published by Microsoft Teams Engineering. So, like since we are at Grow Your Skills, you know you have the link to the GitHub, and uh, if you see here, this pretty much covers you know what this app template is, and and, and this is where you can fork and you can deploy it in one step. And uh, I'll just quickly show you what uh, I mean. Let me show the deployment guide. Since we talked about, you know, deployment is very quick. The documentation is also amazing. You know, it's very easy for uh, IT admins you know, without any developer support to kind of deploy this uh, in, a, in a simple manner. And uh, in my experience, the app template deployment doesn't take more than uh, 60 minutes or 90 minutes. So that's super quick. And uh, I mean, we can follow this guide step by step and then you can deploy it if it directly meets the requirement, right? And now let's say, for example, if you want to kind of customize this, I want to know what this architecture looks like. So in that case, you know, here's where the solution overview and you can see what components are used from Azure or what are the tech stacks that are used. And let's say, for example, in this case, I don't want, I mean, Azure storage, right? You know, I want, uh, I want to use Cosmos DB, then definitely you can, you know, change it. And then, uh, uh, I mean, uh, depending on the customer's requirement, right? So this is the architecture and also we have the cost estimates based on the number of uh, usage and uh, you can definitely take a look at before you pitch it to the customers and that way that give them that gives them a real estimate uh, on how, how much cost that will uh, incur from the Azure side. And finally we have the data stores uh, and everything is schemas and data stores. All right, I think uh, 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 let us know how, how you feel, how you think about it. Like, feel free to share your comments, feedback, and if there is any issues, uh, you can feel free to kind of report the issues in the uh, 
uh, in the GitHub itself. We'll take a look at it. All right. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Madhan. Really, really great stuff. And 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 we said this now many times, but it's really, really vital for people to understand app templates on there and their reference solutions. There are awesome samples for you to take advantage when you're targeting Microsoft Teams. So really, really, really great stuff. So take advantage of them. Don't start from scratch. Uh, it's just easier that way. Now we are then heading to Jim uh, first. And I think uh, Francesco is, is doing the demo unless I'm completely wrong on the setup. Now I'll be doing part of it. Thank okay, you. cool. So um, we are slightly thin on time, so to hopefully we can slightly speed up uh, on the on the on the presentation. Hopefully that doesn't cause you massive problems. But it's a really cool solution what Jim is going to show. So take it away. Thanks, Vesa. All right. So when we have a, a meeting in Teams, like we're doing right now, there there are certain pieces of the Microsoft 365 platform that are that are in use. So over in Teams, of course, we have the chat window. Uh, we have voice and video and anything that's presented. If we take notes during a meeting, those are saved in, uh, as far as I can tell, in SharePoint. And files we can share from a, a SharePoint site in the meeting. And when we record the meeting, the meeting gets saved into stream. And it gets posted into the, uh, the, the chat for the meeting. So if we look at this chat over here, uh, from yesterday, I've got these recordings that we did while we were practicing for our demo. And I can open these right in stream. I can play them in line if I want to. And that's great. The, the problem that we have is that over in Microsoft Stream, there's no support for guest access. That's kind of our problem that we have with, with this whole solution. So we look for a, a solution to that problem and, and I'm going to, we're going to show you today what we came up with. So when the recording completes over in Microsoft Stream, the organizer of the meeting gets this kind of email. Your content is ready to stream. So I could easily just open up the video and stream, download it, upload it to uh, a place where my guests can access it, like YouTube or something like that. I think that's what, uh, what happens with these meetings. But Eh, we like to complicate things unnecessarily as practice for learning the platform to help our customers understand how to do things. Uh, that's what we've done here. So what happens is I've got a rule in my set up in my Outlook mailbox that says anytime I get an email with your meeting recording is here, it's going to forward that email over to a special account that we've created called the curator. And the curator account is sort of like a, a human bot that we use to automate some processes. Now, so what we're going to do is, is we're going to try to solve this problem that a guest has when they try to access the video from inside of Teams. We need to give them alternate access to it. So uh, our solution here is to copy that recording over into the SharePoint site. So we do a, a, a project portal, Office 365 group for each project that we do and invite the customers to participate in that. And that's the best place for them to go to review the recording. So we want to get that recording over into that project portal. And again, I could manually do that, no problem. But I want to try to automate as much of my work as I can. So that's kind of what we're up to. And I want to learn the, the platform. So what happens when this email gets forwarded onto the curator, a flow uh, will execute. So the, the curator has created a flow that says when when a, a an email of that specific with that specific word in the words in the subject is received, we're gonna do some things. Now this is my first flow that I ever created. I, I have learned quite a bit, but uh, we'll just jump through some of the important bits here. So we're gonna parse the name of the recording from the subject. Uh, we're going to parse the URL to the video in stream. Um, we're gonna get some info about our users, our participants in this flow. So the curator, of course, and the user that, that sent the email to the curator. And then we're going to get a list of our active projects from Project Server. So we, we track our statuses or projects in a few different places in Project Server. We have a list of all of our active projects, and those are typically the ones that we have meetings for. So we're going to add those to a list of options that we're going to send as an adaptive card to the user that sent us the email. 
And if I switch over to the Flowbot over here, I've got a chat from the Flowbot saying, would you like me to curate that for you? And it's actually an approval that's running. That list of projects that we that we pulled from uh, the server is here. It's a shortened list because there's a limit to how many options you can do in this style in an adaptive card in Teams. But if we look at the same thing in the approvals tab, we get to see a much larger list. So let me just find this one and I scroll it down here. And then here is the, the larger list of projects. Okay. So I'm I'm gonna use the the adaptive card version to respond to this one. And let's just pick the uh, project here and I'll just hit submit. And with that, the flow will continue on and it will wait for, it, it's gonna, after it waits for a, a, an approval, we check to see if we said to curate the meeting, uh, whether we chose a project or selected other and typed in a project name. If we chose do not curate, then the flow just stops. But now we're gonna set the project, we're gonna get uh, the comments that were submitted, and we're gonna send a request to the curator account. And that is where we're gonna hand it off to Francisco, who built the rest of this solution, and he's gonna walk us through the process for getting the recording up into the project portal. So Francisco, you ready to, to take the stage? Yep. All right. Thank you, Jim. Let me share my screen. All right. So picking up where uh, Jim left off, uh, now I'm logged in as a curator. So I'm assuming the role of the, the human curator. And as Jim responded to that flow bot, now I got this, uh, I got a request myself, right? I, I got this card. Now it's saying it's coming from Jim. It, it's saying that this video belongs to this project. And there's just a few like just checklist items that I, I need to do. But basically the process is that now I, I know where to download the, the video to or upload it to the right project site. So the way I do that is uh, I open the video link here. So this takes me back to stream to the actual video. So now I can up, go to update video de uh, details. And so this is an opportunity for me to, and this is the actual human part of it, where I can, I, I might need to fix the title. There might be a typo. There might be a comment. You can add comments here. Uh, so Jim might have said, you know what, rename the, the title to uh, uh, working session. We'd like to say what kind of uh, a video it is, right? So I renamed it. I might want to maybe just set the language. So now I, I'm ready to upload this to SharePoint. So if I go back to the video details and kind of as a shortcut, so, so that I don't have to download, wait for it to download and then upload to the right location. What we did is that we synchronized the media libraries for, for our project sites. So each one of the project sites has a media library and, and we use the sync option so that I can just download it locally. And as it finishes, it, it will uh, upload it to the right location in SharePoint. So let me do that. Uh, so I'll select the project the Jim indicated and save it. All right, so that's that should very quickly download and upload it. So now let me go to the project site. So this is the media library. These are the videos that have been curated. Let me just refresh. It hasn't uploaded yet. So while we wait, something to note here is that there is a custom column here called a news page URL. So this indicates that the video uh, has been curated and there is a news page created for it. We also notice that there is a thumbnail. Part of the process is that we set a custom thumbnail. So uh, let me show you the, while we wait for that to finish, the flow here. So, once the video is there in the project portal, I mean, we could pretty much say that the recording is ready and the, the, the guest accounts can now watch the video. But we decided to further complicate it, like Jim said, and make it easier for the, for the customer. So, because they don't know that the video is there. So we, we decided uh, that we could also create another flow that creates a news post, which is what I showed you there. So we have another flow here that is running on a schedule. So it's, it's running every night 
and it's looking for videos that are not curated. So the videos that don't have that, that column filled in with the news page. And the first thing it does is, again, it calls project server to get a list of all of our active projects and in support projects, and just get an array of all of the, those project site URLs. And then it, it's going to iterate through all of these project sites and call custom uh, Azure function that we created. Yeah. So it's, it's calling the, the Azure function and just passing in each one of the project site URLs as a parameter. Now, most of the heavy lifting is done in the Azure function, so I'll, I'll, I'll just quickly show what it does in a bit. But once it's done, it just it starts formatting a, a, a result HTML with the customer name, just a list of the customer name, the project name, and, and what the result was. And once it gets all of those, it just sends an email to the curator, just indicating the status, how many videos got curated, or if there's any issues, it, it'll show that in the email. Let me see if this is ready. OK, so it's here in the bottom. So this is the video I just uploaded. We notice it doesn't have any thumbnail and it doesn't have any URL here. So once the flow runs, it's going to query the, the, this project library and it's going to find that this, this is the one that we need to curate. If we had more, it would, it would pick up all the videos that, that are uh, available. So let's go back here. So just to quickly look at the code, uh, what it does, I don't have time to go over each one of these, but it, it's the Azure function is calling the curate videos method. It's setting a thumbnail depending on the video name. So if it's a working session, it, it uses a working session thumbnail or a scrum meeting. So it, it does that. It creates a news page. Uh, it, it promotes it as a news item. It, it adds a web part to embed the, the video and, and just adds a title to it. And then finally, it, it flags that video as curated by giving it the, the news page URL. So once it's done, so let me let me run the flow. So it runs in a schedule, but we can also uh, manually trigger it. So let me let me just click run, just to show what the end result is. Uh, once the flow runs, it creates a news item here on the customers page, and it looks something like this. So it just creates a news item with the with the embedded video and the title, and that's it. Really cool stuff. Thank you, Francesco, and uh, thank you, Jim, as well. Um, I will actually come to the slides uh, and we're closing up. But thank you, Chris. Thank you, Martin. And thank you, Jim and Francesco. I will get your name on the on the, the video when we get that one out as well. So thank you for great demos. Just a quick reminder on the BMP uh, virtual conference is on 1st of September, uh, AKMS BMP virtual conference. This is a free conference. We have already more than 1,000 uh, subscribers, uh, registered uh, attendees on this one. Uh, so, um, and there's a two tracks and a lot of cool presentations uh, available. Everything is free and we're not asking anything related on that. But that's it for today. Recording will be available in the YouTube channel within 24 hours. Follow us on Twitter. Next one, every single Thursday, there's a community call and by a monthly call is on second Tuesday for SharePoint. Uh, other than that, there's quite a lot of other community calls as well. Uh, so please go to the AKMS M365 Dev Calls to get access uh, on those which you're interested. In. But that's it for today. So thank you, everybody. A really great session and let's stay in touch. Bye-bye.